All right, now you're going to be solving trig equations. A couple things you need to make sure you're paying attention to. Pay attention to if there's a res restriction. Remember, trig graphs go on and on infinitely. So if there's a restriction, they only want to know between 0 and 2 pi. We only want the solution. So if this were sine, right, I get hits. where it crosses the x-axis. Remember, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the thetas that touch the x-axis, just like when we're solving regular uh, equations. Remember, we're, you're going to have to be using calculator skills that maybe we haven't practiced for a little bit. This says 0 is equal to tangent. Well, we need tangent theta, but we need to get that theta by itself. So remember what you do to cancel out that tangent? You take the arc tangent. But there is no arc tangent on your calculator. What there is, is this raised negative 1. And to access that, you would type second tangent 0. In this case, you would know that theta is equal to 0. So for this equation right here, you're going to divide both sides by 2. And this says sine of theta. Cool thing is, most of the time, you on sine and cosine, you can just look at the unit circle. So remember, we have to look between 0 and 2 pi. Well, sine is 3 pi halves up here at pi thirds. Cosine is 1 half. Sine is root 3 over 2. But we have a negative. Well, sine is negative in the lower two quadrants. So we're going to have a situation where, well, if this is pi thirds right here, 1, 2, 3, this would be 4 pi thirds. This would be 5 pi thirds. This would be, so what? 1 pi thirds, 2 pi thirds, remember 3 pi thirds, that cancels to pi. So on your calculator, uh, you're going to take sine negative 1 both sides. You're really just going to do this on paper. Because remember, even if the calculator gave you a specific value or radian, which it's not going to give you these radian values, it would maybe give you one degree measure. It's not going to give you both. So this is why you have to know how to solve these on paper and use the unit circle. So theta in this case is going to equal 4 pi thirds and 5 pi thirds. OK, and it looks like I had done uh, most of those. And and the other thing that you can do is type when you get it solved to this, uh, mm, I'm trying to think. No, on, on this one, you need to use the, the unit circle. There you go. All righty. Um, let's jump down here to this one right here. 3 is equal to 4 cosine squared theta. Well, we're going to want to get the cosine squared theta by itself. We did that. Well, now you're going to want to take the square root of both sides. And when you do that, the square root of 3 is just 3. And remember, there's a positive and negative square root. The square root of 4 is 2. So again, you can look at the unit circle. Well, at pi 6, cosine is 3 pi halves. Sine is 1 half. So at 1, 2, 3, 4, here would be 5 pi 6, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And that makes sense. 12 pi 6 would be 2 pi. So 
This says we need to know both the positive and the negative versions. So when we take the arc sine of both sides, that cancels. And what we are left with are these four, pi 6, 5 pi 6, 7 pi 6, 11 pi 6. And remember, pi 6 and 11 pi 6, those are the positive versions. When cosine is positive and cosine is negative at the 5 pi 6 and at the 7 pi 6. Okay, is there one? Yeah, so let's do this. I think this is the last one we're going to do on these on solving. Uh, we have tangents on both sides. One is a quadratic, so we're going to set this up as a quadratic like we would other things. Since what I've noticed is this is negative over here. I'm going to bring all of this to the left side because I don't want to deal with the negative. So I'm going to add tangent squared theta. I'm going to subtract 2 tangent theta and I'm going to add 4. That leaves us with tangent squared theta, subtract 2 tangent theta plus 1 because when we add 4 over here, negative 3 plus 4 is 1. And now this almost looks like x squared minus 2x plus 1, which that factors to x minus 1 x minus 1. So guess what? This is going to fact, factor to tangent minus 1 times tangent minus 1 or tangent minus 1 squared. We're going to take the square root of both sides and we're going to get uh, <laughs> I think that, well, I'm going to leave it like this. We were going to have to be careful about possibly the positive and negative of that. We Sometimes you have to look for, for more values. But when we take the square root, we'll just leave it like this for now. The square root of both sides, we get tangent theta is equal to 1. Well, when is an, any value equal to 1? When a number is over itself, where are the places where sine and cosine are the same at the 45 degree angles. And that should make sense. When you've got a 90 degree angle, the other two are 45 degree angle. And remember your, your geometry, when those two angles are the same, they're, the sides across from them are the same. So root 2 over 2, so over here, this is going to be negative root 2 over 2, positive root 2 over 2. Down here, we're going to have negative root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2. And then this quadrant, the cosine is positive, the sine is negative. And if we don't need both versions, we just need the positive version, then Remember, tangent is positive in this quadrant and in this quadrant. In which state is that? Well, this is pi fourths. This would be 2 pi fourths, which is the same as pi halves. This would be 3 pi fourths, 4 pi fourths. This would be 5 pi fourths, and then 6 pi fourths. And then down here, this would be 7 pi fourths. But the two that we would care about would be pi fourths and five pi fourths. All right, that's it for this one.